Hey guys, how's it going? This is John Rivera of the Solid State Gamer presenting to you guys a hands-on preview of Super System Softworks Drift Stage for the PC. This is actually the first time I covered a PC game on the Solid State Gamer. I guess it's better late than never, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, so here it is. Specifically, we're looking at the early alpha demo, subtitled Alpha 0.1.1 of Drift Stage. Now, this build of this title is actually pretty important and significant because this was made to coincide with the Kickstarter that SSS was using to promote and gain financial support for Drift Stage on uh, roughly a year ago, give or take a couple months. And the reason why it's such a big deal is, well, with most game developers that do Kickstarters and try to garner more attention and financial support for their projects, usually they attach images of concept art, screenshots of in-game action, and also have like a trailer of in-game footage paired up or interlaced with some developer comments or interviews saying how the game is significant and how it's going to be a game changer or it's going to be a groundbreaker or just a simply an entertaining experience. However, the folks at Super System Softworks pretty much outdid themselves and went one better by making their early alpha demo publicly available for folks to try out. Now, I dare say that this was the key driver to gaining more interest and financial support in this project, so much to the point where at the end of the campaign, they had a marginal increase over the actual goal that they had. They actually made significantly more money than they were expecting to in order to finish this game. So with that, it looks like they have the resources financially to see this project to completion and I hope they do because what they're trying to achieve and what has already been accomplished with this early alpha demo is so much more than I could have possibly imagined a pre-alpha tech demo to do and of course I'll get into more detail as to why that is later on but as for right now let's get into the menus so here we have a few options some of them are a faded blue and some of them are just a regular blue and the faded options are not yet available, but they are, in a sense, promised by SSS. So the only mode that's playable here is an arcade mode. We'll get into that later on. Career mode. Now apparently this game is promising a career mode along the same lines of perhaps Ridge Racer Type 4 or I guess Gran Turismo. It's anybody's guess at this point. They haven't really elaborated on that. Multiplayer. They're also promising local and online multiplayer, hopefully through privately hosted servers and something to that effect. Um, I don't know how they're gonna handle that. Now, local multiplayer, I'm assuming that's local area network, which is pretty awesome. Workshop, track and livery editors. So apparently this game is promising that you will be able to create and edit your own tracks. Hopefully you can upload them to a server, a la Super Smash Brothers Wii or Brawl, or no, I'm sorry, Brawl and Wii U for like a specific track, featured track of the day. I think that's what I'm getting at. Uh, options, pretty self-explanatory. Driftstage.com, this is actually where you can find more information on the game as well as this exact early alpha demo. So let's get into arcade. So here's the only available mode, the alpha demo time trial. You race against three AI opponents. Um, in the form of ghosts, there's a novice, there's an intermediate, and there's an expert. Pretty challenging stuff. And you also get to compete against your personal best time ghost. Single race. It's self-explanatory. Same thing with time trial. Now, Infinite Drift is interesting to me because it's boasting a mode where you can just select a car and say, I just want to race. I don't care what track it is. Just give me something to race on. And the game itself will procedurally or generate at random a track for you to drive on and that's awesome and on top of that challenge your friends to today's random stage daily drift is kind of daily drift and infinite drift you're kind of trying to cure two different itches infinite drift on one hand is for someone who is indecisive and doesn't really care about editing their own tracks they just want to get into the game get on the track have some fun and get out. And that's what Infinite Drift is all about. And it's also for people who want to test their skills and not really know what's coming their way. It's it's like this random, you know, 
it's a can it's it's basically a, a candy jar you never know what you're going to get and just because of how many possible permutations the game can put different tracks through I mean it means that you're never going to deal with the same track twice so it's a good way to keep your timing and your skills sharp now as for daily drift this is along that same line but it's a little more specific you can actually see the track before you race on it so it's kind of coinciding with the creative side of making tracks for drift stage so it looks like what they're trying to do here with this game is explore the breadth and the depth of what can be done in this experience and I think that's awesome all right so let's get into the alpha time trial demo all right, so even though the sign post says go, it doesn't start really until I pass the post. So let me back up for a stint so I can describe to you how the controls work and how the agency works in practice. So your right trigger, if you're using a USB gamepad, is your gas. Left and right steers your vehicle in those respective directions. Left trigger is your brake. And if you hold down left trigger, it's also your reverse. So. All right, let's get into this. There's a novice target. All right, so engaging into drifts is done by tapping the brake and pressing in, in a certain direction to engage into a drift. Now, steering in the opposite direction that you're drifting in will straighten the car out and exit the drift. It's pretty simple stuff. And I just passed the novice target. Now the best way to maintain your speed around turns is to stay in drift. But stay in the drift too long and you will eventually start to lose speed. Also, crashing into the walls like I have been will also decrease your speed. Now, as you can see, the visuals of this game are very interesting. And the thing that really does stick out amongst other things like the color is the fact that these models and these different environmental pieces, including the track itself, are composed of low polygon count structures and that's very much in the same vein as games like Ridge Racer, Daytona USA as well as Sega Rally Championship and the reason why I bring up those titles is because from what I've experienced in this game and from what other people have experienced in this title is that this game is trying to be a send up and a love note to the mid 90s era 3D racing arcade style games of old. So games like Ridge Racer Series, Daytona USA, the Sega Rally Championship games, even Virtua Racing. This game is pretty much trying to replicate the mechanical feel and the overall presentation of those games. It also satisfies this feel with the control agency, you know, with how the drift mechanic works and how basic the controls are and how delightfully antiquated the physics are. I mean, these physics aren't really all that complicated. I mean, this is nowhere near as advanced as Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport, but then again, it's not really meant to be as advanced as that. I mean, this game, along with all the other mid-90s era arcade-style racing games, was pretty much made in an effort to capture that feeling of traveling at high speeds down a nice sprawling raceway, engaging in huge fishtail turns and drifts, overtaking your opponents to get first place. I mean, that's pretty much what the point of games of that era we're, we're trying to do and it seems like this game is no exception now the visuals on top of being low poly count the color scheme of the visuals are very interesting and 
are pretty much, again, you know, very derivative, kind of referential, but pretty much a love note to the new wave culture of the 1980s. In fact, when I first played this game, I thought to myself, man, it's like Ridge Racer and Miami Vice had a baby. And I still stick by that because when you look at the cool colors, like the blues, the violets, and the purples, very pastel-like and, you know, very reminiscent of the 80s. And the same thing with the, the hot neon orange and pinks. But the way that they're arranged in one environment, like, you know, the windows with yellow and orange glass, the buildings being constructed of purple exteriors, it's very much a wonderful use of complementary colors. Even when you look at this car that I'm driving right now, it ranges from yellow to orange, and it just pops when put amidst this blue track. I mean, it's just very jarring and, and very, it's, it's just a great use of colors that you don't really see a lot in video games. I'm surprised I have not mentioned the music yet. So the third member of Super System Softworks, yes, Super System Softworks has three members in its team. So the guy who handles the music, Hugh Myron, he basically specializes in music that has a very much an 80s feel with its use of bass heavy tones, MIDI sound samples, as well as 80s style soft shred guitar. And you can easily hear that in this track. And I believe the track is called Exclusive Coupe or Exclu Exclusive Coupe or something like that. Um, but it's just solid. The music in this game is absolutely solid. So is the sound design. The sound design is fantastic. at least beat my personal best. Oh, gosh. Now, I mentioned before that this game pretty much achieves what it's trying to do in spades and the reason why I say that is because whenever I play this game it doesn't feel like for a second that something is out of place you know the mechanics they feel like they're just right the controls are just right the music is just right and the visuals are just on point everything is just on point with this game there's nothing in this game that really feels like a misstep. Of course, there are some things that do stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, the clipping between cars and such, and I'm not talking about these ghost cars. Also, the transition out of drifts, as you saw that my car snapped into a straight position for some reason. Here, let me show you again. Yeah, just that sudden snap. Now, according to Super System Softworks, they have made some changes to the physics of this game in terms of physical car hand uh, handling and the animations that govern that stuff. And that also has translated over to going into and coming out of drifts. Apparently the transition's a lot more seamless. Unfortunately, they haven't really talked about when the next build is coming out. They made all these changes, apparently, to the physics model. But, again, no release date given for the next test build. Which is kind of a bummer, because I really want to see what else they have in store for Drift Stage. But, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait. But when it does come out, I will be ready. Let's do one more lap. 
See, that's the great thing about this game. It's just such a joy to look at, to listen to, to play, that you just don't want to put it down. God, listen to that shredding guitar, man. It's just fantastic. Yeah, this great. This game is just fantastic. It's what was what was the phrase that I came up with? This game is very much delightfully antiquated. It's it's just a perfectly funct functional racing game that's a send up to the early '90s games that has such a character and a flair to it that, man, it just... <laughs> you can't help but look at it and say, man, that looks fantastic. But anyway, that'll pretty much do it for this preview into Drift Stage, the early alpha demo. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys had a fun time watching me play this game and kind of giving my two cents into what it's like so far and uh, if you guys are so interested into trying this game out for yourself be sure to mosey on over to driftstagegame.com uh, the alpha as far as i remember is still publicly available so you guys can check it out play it for yourselves and tell me what you think um, as for that next build i have no idea when it's coming out like i said they have not really given a concrete date as to when they're rolling that out but when it does come out i will be ready to give it another preview so be sure to stay tuned to the Solid State Gamer for that. And to get the details on what other additions are being made to the Drift Stage formula, be sure to check out the Solid State Gamer .wordpress.com for that news update. And uh, also be sure to check out the ROMcast. It's our weekly podcast that we do, uh, hosted by myself and co-hosted by Matt Offwhite. And occasionally with guest appearances from Nathan Van Dyke and Leo Melikov from GamingBolt.com. So anyway, that will pretty much do it for this hands-on preview into Drift Stage. Um, this is John Rivera from the Solid State Gamer signing off saying thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be sure to drop your suggestions, your comments, your feedback to this video when it comes when it comes out, when it's posted live. And be sure to... Just check out our website, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.